information down in the description box about this wig. I have got so many requests to show a start to finish on how I customize my wig. So today's video, I'm going to share every single step I take to make my wigs look natural. I will be working with a 360 wig today because I love the flexibility of these wigs. This wig did come pre-plucked already, but I wanted to take this wig to the next level and recustomize it to my liking. This is a glueless cap. It does come with combs and adjustable straps. When I'm working with my wigs, I like to use a canvas head, a foam head, any type of mannequin head that you can get a hold on would be very helpful. The first thing I'm going to do with this particular wig is remove the comb that's in the center. Removing the comb in the center will help the wig to lay flat and you really don't need it. The first thing I like to do when customizing my wigs is to bleach the knots. What are knots? They are the little dots at the base of the cap where they tie the hair. To do this, I take two scoops of bleach powder and I also like to use developer. I usually go for 30 or 40 developer and I just kind of pour it according to my liking. I like my consistency to be kind of thick because I don't want it to seep through into the hair. Here's a close up of how the cap look. And as you can see the little dots that are the hair tie into this cap this is what I'm going to be using the bleach on and I like to use q-tips to apply the bleach to the cap and that's only because I want to make sure I'm delicately applying this to the cap because if you press or use anything that's too heavy what's going to happen is the bleach is going to sink into the hair and trust me I don't want that to happen it's hard to fix now let the bleach sit on the hair for 30, 45 minutes. Different hair or different companies, I noticed their caps give different results when it comes to bleaching the knots. The number one problem a lot of you always tell me is that when you bleach the knots, they become brassy or orangey looking. And that's normal when it comes to using bleach. So what I like to do is go back in and take a purple shampoo. I will be sure to put my favorite ones down in the description box, but I like to go ahead and shampoo the cap only where I bleach the knots. Let it sit for a good two to three minutes and then rinse. And as you can see that instantly corrected the problem. Now that my knots are bleached, I like to go ahead next and move on to customizing the hairline. As I stated, this wig did already come with a pre-plucked hairline as you can see. Now I did originally cut off the baby hairs that came with the wig just because I felt like it was a huge separation between the hairline and where they placed the baby hairs. And plus I wanted to kind of customize this particular wig to my liking and recreate the hairline itself. So what you're seeing right here is how the hairline came already. So I'm going to take a little bit of mousse and apply it around the hairline and I'm using the curling wand to kind of push the hair back and I'm using the mousse to make the hair a little bit tacky so when I go to tweeze it'll be a lot easier. I wanted to share a close up of the hairline and how it came on this wig. Now the problem and reason why I want to recustomize this is not the hairline itself, it's mostly the lace that you see at the front. I feel like it's going to show really badly so I wanted to redo the whole hairline. I usually would tweeze on wet hair but this time I'm going to dry the hair just because I feel like I want to be able to get the real feel of how the hairline looks once the hair is dry. Sometimes if the hair is still wet, it can kind of look thinner than what it actually is. So you don't want to over tweeze. I'm going to go ahead and apply a little bit of coconut oil to the hair. And this is my, one of my favorite products to use before I flat iron any of my hair extensions or wigs, just because I feel like it protects the hair a whole lot. So let me just be very clear about this. Do not make a mistake and use tweezers that are no good. You want to make sure you have you a good pair of tweezers when doing this. It makes a huge difference on the outcome of the results and also just how long it takes to actually do this. So I begin at the front of the hairline and what I'm doing is tweezing the front and getting rid of any like knots that did not bleach that are very visible. Next, I like to separate the hair and kind of go back into the hairline and begin tweezing around the area that you see here. 
And doing this step makes all the difference because sometimes when you go to tweeze just the front of the hairline and then you pull the hair back, you'll look at it and you'll say, well, I, I thought I tweezed a lot of hair and it still looks thick. So why do it still look thick? It's because when you tweeze the front only and don't go back a little bit further, the hair in the back is giving an illusion that you did not tweeze enough. So you want to make sure you go back into the hairline and get rid of extra hairs or the bulkiness or whatever's going on in there. And when I'm doing my tweezing, I like to do every other section. So I will tweeze a little bit in one section, skip a section, and then tweeze some more. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to create any bald spots, but you do just want to make sure that you're checking your results. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm brushing the hair back and checking to see exactly how much hair I have tweezed and if it's looking okay. And now here you can see the difference between the side that I haven't tweezed and the side that I did tweeze. And I really like the way the outcome is. Because I don't like the way the extra lace looks in the front where the baby hairs were, I'm going to go ahead and remove that extra lace that you guys seen. I'm making sure to cut around the hairline that I just created. You don't want to create a straight cut, you want to follow the hairline. I'm going to go back and recreate baby hairs to my liking and make them a little bit more natural than the ones that was on there. Be sure to check out my video on how to create baby hairs if you want more details on how I do this. Now that the hairline is created and the baby hairs are complete, I want to share with you guys how it looks applied. Instead of a wig cap, I did use my fake scalp method on this wig today. So if you would like to see how I do that, make sure to click the link in the description box and see that video. So here's the finished results. I decided to go ahead and glue this wig down so that you guys can see how the full effect is of this wig when it is attached to the head. You don't have to glue it down if you don't want to. It still will look very, very natural. I really like the end results and I know some of you will probably have a problem with all the steps that I took to get the wig to look this natural but these are honestly the steps that I like to take. It's not a hassle for me but if you are a little bit more into doing less work I do have videos sharing different ways you can make your wigs look natural without putting in so much work. Again.